Friday, it's April 17th, and unfortunately this morning we're going to be dealing with some snow. Now it's not here just yet, but it's on its way probably within about the next half hour to an hour. So a live look in East Lansing, currently 33 degrees and it's a quiet start out there. However, if you look down to the south, snow is on the way. Satellite and radar showing you it's starting in from the southwest. It's going to move off to the northeast and it kind of looks like we're already seeing some snow this morning in Lansing. However, we do have dry air in place and that's kind of preventing a lot of that snow from reaching the ground just yet. However, it's a different story the farther south you head. Jackson, it's a similar story. Just starting to see that snow get a little closer to the ground. Hillsdale, though, extending all the way out towards cold water. They are seeing the snow and that is a good again going to continue to lift off to the north and the east as we head throughout this morning. An area of low pressure pushing all of this snow through mid Michigan, giving us at least a couple hours of some steady snow this morning, likely leading to at least some slushy accumulations, mainly along and south of I-94. So your future track as we go hour by hour again by nine o'clock this morning, anywhere from Lansing points to the south, we will be seeing that snow and that's going to continue at least all the way until about one o'clock or so. Shortly after that, that's when we'll start to see that snow kind of taper off or break apart, changing and mixing with a little bit of some a little bit of some rain, probably Probably more towards around four or five o'clock and that'll continue probably until about six before all is said and done and we finally start to dry out as we head into the evening and overnight hours. As we approach the day Saturday, finally looking better. We're talking mostly clear skies. That means a lot of sunshine and it will finally be warmer with highs that reach back up into the low 50s. That's still below average for this time of the year, but better compared to the 40s that we've been stuck seeing pretty much all week. Now in regards to predicted snowfall for today, Anywhere along I-94 and then points to the south, expect about one to three inches of accumulation. If you're up near Lansing, you could see up to an inch worth of snow, probably likely just going to see it dusting. And again, mainly on grassy and elevated surfaces. I think if you're closer to the state line, you may see some snow collect on those roadways. So watch out for a few slick spots. Otherwise, though, a lot of the snow, since it is April, will probably melt pretty quickly by Saturday morning. Today, though, expect temperatures to reach into the low 40s by later in the day, probably close to around 6 or even 8 o'clock. We're going to have one of those days where our temperatures take a long time to warm up. Snow this morning and then some mix later this evening. Tonight we drop down to 28 degrees with decreasing clouds turning partly cloudy and in your seven day forecast after today. I don't have a single snow icon. That's probably the good news. Sunshine in 53 tomorrow, 55 with a few isolated rain showers on Sunday and then temperatures are warming up with highs in the 60s by next Thursday. To that. Thank you, Claire. Well, Zoom says they're improving security. Zoom is a video conferencing app and website. Well, they say people have been Zoom bombing. That's when an outside person breaks into online meetings and can cause disruptions. Zoom says they've hired a firm that actually specializes in stopping hackers. They say they've already launched features to make meetings more secure. And big tech is joining the fight against coronavirus by May. Silicon Valley says it will have a way to track the virus using our phones. Liz McLaughlin explains. Smartphones could soon be a tool in tracking the spread of COVID-19 as Google and Apple work together to enable digital contact tracing. Contact tracing is a core public health function in the United States. Traditionally, contact tracing is done manually. The labor intensive process involves identifying those infected, finding out who they've been in contact with, and encouraging those people to isolate or get tested. We do a lot of work getting patients in, whether it be phone calls or field visits. Now Google and Apple aim to make it easier. In May, they'll push new software to all Android and iOS devices, allowing Bluetooth signals to track if a phone's been in close proximity to someone who's infected. And then it will warn anyone who was around you that they may have been exposed in the last 14 days. The companies say its tools won't identify particular individuals, but would make it possible for health officials to contact them. This week, both Apple and Google assured governments would not be able to require its citizens to use the software. Users would have to opt in. I think that they really need to convince people that they are doing the right thing here, and it's going to be tough. For it to work, trust and wide adoption would be necessary, not to mention better access to testing. In the U.S. right now, we're doing about 150,000 tests a day. So we're orders of magnitude away from where we need to be to be able to do something that comprehensive and that uh, aggressive. 
ambitious efforts facing enormous challenges in the fight against COVID-19. Well, coming up after the break here, a new study may change the way you wash your hands. We'll tell you what you need to know after the break. You're watching Fox 47 Morning News at 7. China's economy has shrunk for the first time in decades. Get this, it is their first decline since 1976. China is where the coronavirus pandemic started, and they were placed on strict lockdown and almost shut down completely. China is the world's second.